Greetings fellas, Mediocre Gaming back again and this time I have zero cycle every single stage in Mara and now season. As you can see, cycles use zero for every single stage. Now this is not easy as I can tell but the thing is that we have vulnerability from the trotters this season and this is very very good to enable troll teams especially Sampo and even Yukong. Yukong can consider be troll in blade team also but anyway it's done and I am happy to announce that this is my first zero cycle clear in every single stage that the game possibly can offer us. Now I'm going to be very honest MOC 9 is going to be the hardest one because of Team 1. Team 2 was done on first try so that was fine but Team 1 is the one that will slow a lot of players down especially if you can't kill the first frigid brawler in time and then the second frigid brawler will spawn trash mobs and this will be a very very severe DPS check against destruction units except blade because blade can activate follow up and follow up hits every single enemy on the stage so this is why blade was able to do team one much better than tanfeng now i already did a tanfeng showcase on moc 9 before but it was with bronya so it still doesn't count for a blade team but for moc 9 i can easily say that this will be the hardest one to do and stage 10 is pretty easy compared to stage 9 in general however team 2 for stage 10 will be a little bit harder than team 1 but fear not it's still a lot easier than moc 9 in general for your information this tier list is moderated checked and verified by the Moldovan Tigers Zero Cycling Guild. This guild is very specialized in zero cycling content, so we have come across this tier list and put them all together. So how this works is that supports and DPS are in the different tier lists. Also, the way how this works is that the leftmost character is going to be the most potent one compared to the rightmost characters in order. So Silver Wolf is going to be better than Bronya, Bronya is going to be better than Lynx, so on and so forth. Now, Silver Wolf, you already know the answer why it is the best. Controversially, it can also be Bronya, Silver Wolf, but Bronya with out Silver Wolf, that's totally fine. But sometimes the tier list can go like this also, depending on your sub stats. But for me and for my guild members, Silver Wolf is going to be the best one in general. Silver Wolf can apply a greater than 50% defense down on enemies, enough said. And defense down is going to scale higher than attack percentage or HP percentage up or damage increase or crit damage. So then again, defense down is going to be the best way to make your characters deal more damage in the long run. Okay, then we also have weakness. Now weakness in plus contribute a very very huge bonus to those damage numbers also. But then again, it needs RNG. And Silver Wolf can also use her ultimate three times in the same battle. That's the biggest increase and the biggest call for why Silver Wolf is the best in the tier list. Pela can also do that, yes, but the problem is that Pela is not as consistent as Silver Wolf. Pela needs an effect hit rate body. Silver Wolf does not need an effect hit rate body. She needs a defense body in general. So with a defense body and with effect hit rate substats you are definitely going to hit your defense down very very often even your bugs can land with a fairly good ratio so then again silver wolf does not need effect hit rate body and she can run defense and this is also particularly why she's so tanky compared to like Bela or kafka or sapo now why bronya is going to be less potent than silver wolf is because Bronya is pretty much damage scaling so 
she's going to be boosting crit damage, boosting overall damage of the member of choice, and also she can support any character of choice. So that means Bronya can actually be a battery for Silver Wolf. So same like Sampo and Pela, they can be batteries for Silver Wolf. Especially if they are going to hold the resolution shines as pearls of sweat, then Sampo moves first or Pela moves first, then Silver Wolf strikes the defense down target with before the tutorial mission starts like good and Silver Wolf is able to get energy in two turns. That's why Silver Wolf is pretty much S tier and she can use ultimate three times per battle at a maximum. Now Bronya, the thing is that she can use ultimate mostly twice per battle and the thing is that Bronya, unfortunately she is a bit skill point hefty but with E1 that can be fixed and E2 is mostly not needed especially if your DPS is going to be significantly slow like Blade or Clara unless you use speed boot on them for whatever reason then Bronya E2 is going to be useless in general but for Bronya's E1 it is going to be a very very skill point easy management although it is a 50% chance and has a one turn cooldown now Bronya can act as a battery for other units for example Ting Yun so if Bronya supports Ting Yun Ting Yun is able to get an extra energy regeneration for other teammates so this is exactly why Bronya can be a very good battery as well as a DPS support, hyper carry support. So then again, Silver Wolf is going to be either greater or worse than Silver Wolf in most situations, depending on your sub stats. And Bronya can be built quite tanky also. Now, Lynx. Lynx, why she's better than Ting Yun? Because her niche is going to overpower Ting Yun's general capability. And Link's niche is that she can buff Blade to such a potent degree that he gets a 30% damage increase upon using skill. So at very very low cost also. So Link's can use a basic rotation of skill, basic, skill, basic, something like that. Or don't even need skill at all depending on how potent your Blade is. So then again, Link's has very very skill point positive gameplay and also allows Blade to stay above 50% HP so that means Blade is able to use his ultimate and get one extra stack for his talent which is a counter attack by the way so Lynx is able to support Blade to such a potent degree it's, it, it's actually amazing so then again Lynx is going to outshine Ting Yun just because of her niche now Ting Yun in general gameplay Lynx is going to provide a lot of HP for the team and she can solo sustain that is also why she is at S tier and then for Ting Yun the thing is that she is going to provide a large energy increase to any teammates energy bar so Blade, Tan Feng, even Silver Wolf Ting Yun supporting Silver Wolf it happened before for one of my Zero Cycle kills so this means Silver Wolf is able to strike another defense down on cases where there are two bosses on the same field so Ting Yun is able to act as a battery in a way also but Ting Yun even with her skill positive gameplay and consistent uptime for her buffs especially for her skill she is not going to be as good as Lynx in a more specialized gameplay but in general gameplay Ting Yun is going to be better than Lynx especially if you're not running Blade and if you're running Tan Feng for example so Tan Feng is definitely going to appreciate Ting Yun in the very very long run and generally for speed boat Tan Feng Ting Yun, Locha, and Yukong are the best teammates. So Ting Yun provides a battery for the team as well as consistent buff uptime. So very very strong here. And she also scales on attack, so you need to put at least one defense body on her. Because if she runs pure attack, then she is going to be very very frail. So this is also particularly why Ting Yun is going to be less effective than Lynx in general. But 
Then again, you might be surprised to see Sampo in the tier list. Now, Sampo actually provides a very, very strong battery for Silver Wolf because if Sampo moves first, he's going to apply a defense down via Resolution Shines as Burst of Sweat, and then Silver Wolf will also make use of Sampo's Springboard. So, this means that Sampo is able to provide Silver Wolf a consistent two turn ultimate. So, very, very strong here. And then Sampo doesn't even need an effect hit rate body he has so many instances in his attacks and he is somewhat like an inverse yukong a defense down version of yukong he's going to be using his ultimate in the very very final part of the battle and he is going to annihilate every single enemy that has wind weakness so sampo is a very very good at wind breaking that's number one and also sampo is very very fast innately so you can put speed on him and he can run a defense body instead and the, that's his biggest advantage he can run a defense body instead of effect hit rate body because he is so consistent at applying a defense down that's why sampo is so strong and this is my proud invention and i've been using sampo since two months ago for my zero cycle class and sampo is doing a beautiful job i love my sampo all right Yukong. Yukong has a very terrible niche where all her passive buffs are pretty self-centered and specifically tailored to imaginary characters. And then again, if your DPS characters have so much crit damage and crit rate already, you don't need to put Yukong in the team because a defense down is going to increase your damage more than and the extra crit damage and the attack up so then again the attack up even though 80 percent attack up or more like 88 percent on skill level 12 it's going to be doing less damage compared to the 14 percent defense down from sample because the higher the enemies are in the flaws higher level they are especially level 88 and level 90 they have a lot of defense and defense shred is no joke it's going to be scaling higher than every other start and every other buff that you apply for your teammates that's why debuffs are so much more valuable than buffs and yukong is providing buffs not debuffs by the way that's why debuffs are generally more preferred although unfortunately sampo has a one turn debuff only from resolution shines experts or sweat now you can also run incessant rain on sampo but then the thing is that defense down is going to be a generally better solution now also resolution shines as well so even at s1 it's good enough to zero cycle clear every single moc i've already tried this in the past i did it but my resolution shines as well as sweat even at s3 currently he's still doing just fine without any other support character that providing a hp buff or an attack buff but as long as you have two core defense down units like silver wolf sample silver wolf Pela, then you can zero cycle everything already next yukong like i said so yukong is basically like um attack up version of sample and damage up version so then again a uh, yukong's buff up time is also very short like only two turns but you can maximize this to three turns via skill then ultimate then skill again then you can maximize to three buffs pretty much very niche in general and unfortunately every time yukong has to use a skill all her buffs will be depleted in the next turn so this is very very difficult to use and the problem with yukong is that she needs e6 to work lower than e6 is not recommended that's why yukong is niche just like sampo that's why niche characters are placed on the right most part of the tier list but then again sampo is going to be much stronger if you have idolons on your dps characters sampo likes e6 blade sampo likes e2 tanfeng because they are able to use his defense down consistently and more effectively so tanfeng able to advance forward his turns blade having more chances to launch three attacks in one turn so then again this is wh why sapo really likes both blade and tanfeng yukong likes tanfeng more but then yukong with blade is kind of suboptimal in my opinion but it can be done it can be done 
I'm not saying it's impossible, but again, viable is not equal to the best. Pela, unfortunately, needs effect hit rate body. Without effect hit rate body, she is going to suffer. Her ultimate has a very low base chance, like 100%. It is quite low, especially if you're facing with enemies with a lot of effect rest. So 100% is considered quite low. But then again, Pela needs effect hit rate body because she only has one instance of attack. Sampo has three instances of attacks via his ultimate. Pela has only one instance of attack. So he, she really, really needs effect hit rate body. And this takes a very, very huge cost to her survivability in general. You might argue that Pela has higher defense down generation and value compared to like the resolution shines as per of sweat. Yes, you're correct. But the thing is, Pela, the problem is that she has very low survivability, especially if you don't run defense body on her. And she needs speed boots also and with an energy regeneration rope. So you only have one slot in your relic to put defense or HP. So Pela is not going to be surviving as long as Sampo in general. So now for the Kafka. Kafka is very disgusting with the resolution shines as per Sweat Lagoon because she can apply the defense down via her follow-up talents on any enemy you choose. So it's defense down on demand. But the problem, again, like Bela, just needs her effect hit rate body. If she has a defense body, then it's not good because she only has two instances of attacks. So this means that Kafka is going to need an effect hit rate body most of the time. And for her ultimate, she only does one instance of attack compared to Sampo's three instance of attacks. So less chance to apply defense down. And Kafka, she has a one turn defense down only. So that means she needs a, to really time it properly. The talent needs to be activated at the correct time. And also your DPS characters must be as fast as Kafka. That's the problem for this to work because if the enemies are going to be faster than your dps and kafka is going to be faster than the enemy then your defense down is wasted pretty much or sometimes your talent is not even activated at that moment so that's not good so kafka can be viable but the thing is you need to time her properly and you need to speed tune her to the enemy and to your dps same with Yukong, you need to speed tune, but speed tuning is not a problem if you have the relic slots. And if you have found a lot of relics, especially if you're on very high trailblazer levels. So Asta, Asta, she's able to provide a speed buff and an attack buff. But the problem is that she does not use her ultimate as often as you think. She only uses her ultimate during the second wave of the battle because first wave, normally the speed is not needed. And Asta has a niche where she needs to use a speed buff on those frigid prowlers because frigid prowlers with deep freeze, they deduct 20 speed from your entire team. And Asta is able to boost 40 points of speed or more. So Asta is able to counter the deep freeze effect. So this is why Asta as a niche pick also A for Locha. Locha E1, not E0. This is why he is B and only at E1. The problem is that his attack up is only 20%. 20% is quite measly actually compared to like Yukong or like Tinyun. So then again, Locha is there for your survivability. He is there for your attack buff, but the attack buff is so minimal. But then he is just there for the survivability. So then again, B, nothing much to say about Locha. But the fact is that he's a very, very skill point positive unit. You don't even need to use skill on him at all. Then for Luca, Luca, he can run resolution shines as per sweat, but he needs an effect hit rate body. And he definitely can target only one enemy. But targeting one enemy, she applies vulnerability. The vulnerability is not as strong compared to like Sampo's all enemy defense down compared and also the range is very short, like I said. And with Pela, Pela is going to be a lot better compared to like Luka. Kafka is going to be a lot better also in terms of defense down. Because Kafka can hit all enemies, Pela can hit all enemies, Sampo can also. But Luka only hits one enemy, that's the main problem of this. But you might also argue with me, Silver Wolf also is one enemy. But Silver Wolf 
is so potent 40 to 50 percent defense down so that really outweighs the measly 12 percent vulnerability you get from luka and luka needs effect hit rate body silver wolf does not need effect hit rate body that's the biggest difference so luka is going to be very very frail now for the support tier list is done now the dps e2 tanfeng e6 blade very very strong compost but my blade is at e4 and e5 when i did my zero cycle clears i can safely say that blade is doing less damage than tanfeng even at e0 tanfeng already does so much more damage compared to an e5 blade in by default so that's really really scary here and the fact is that tanfeng with e2 can advance forward he is going to be like an imaginary sushang he can run speed boot he can run attack boot and with e2 he it gives him the freedom to run speed boot compared to the attack boot in e1 or e0 blade with e0 can run speed and hp boot but the problem is that he's not going to be doing as much damage compared to a speed boot and a type boot tanfeng that's the main problem and his timing timing is impeccable timing needs to be very very focused on blade because blade's damage output is greatly increased on the amount of times that he gets hit and tanfeng he is more like a hunt character but has blast damage so nothing really affects his damage potential other than his idolons and his buffs from the allies so tanfeng as a very staple D dps unit he is going to be the best dps of all and blade as second next the dps for clara and Jingyuan. now the problem is that clara needs a healer like Fushan for example because Clara is going to be taking a lot of damage even with the damage reduction unfortunately and Clara does not like a healer in her team because she is not doing enough damage that's the most simple reason but Clara likes Fushan because Fushan reduces the damage taken and also she is able to provide a buff a crit damage buff at E1. Fushan is not in the tier list but according to some of my other zero cycle clears Fushan is going to be at A tier, just below Pela here, right here. Because Fushan then again is going to provide a lot of buffs offensively and defensively for Clara to utilize, as well as even Tanfeng, because Tanfeng is very, very frail. So Jingyuan, now Jingyuan, he needs his idol lords, or else he is not going to do quite well. But the problem with Jingyuan is that he is not as consistent in his damage dealing. Yes, he is an erudition character, but his lightning lords hit only specific targets. His lightning lord doesn't hit all enemy targets, by the way. It's very specific targets. So sometimes when his lightning lord activates, his lightning lord might hit the boss one time and all the adds like nine times, for example. It does happen. So Jingyuan is very inconsistent by the way forgive me for saying this but Jingyan has fallen out of the meta i've already said this so many times but then again it is only because of luck i managed to get my e0 Jingyan to zero cycle in this current season and outside of this memory turbulence i don't think clara and Jingyan is able to do a zero cycle unless clara is e2 then yes it's possible but Jingyan really really needs his idolos especially e4 e4 is very very needed especially if he can't get those lightning lord stacks in time he's always at that cliffhanger where the ultimate is going to be like 99 full and then you don't get your lightning lord stacks it does happen for an e3 Jingyuan at least but for e4 Jingyuan it fixes a lot of problems that's why Jingyuan needs idolons blade doesn't need idolons tanfeng doesn't need idolons to zero cycle clear Clara, she might need idol loss, especially E2. That is a very hefty one. But even at E0, she can zero cycle, but she is going to have a lot of problems with E0 because she doesn't get her marks of counter. And, you know, when she uses her skill, the marks of counter will disappear. So that's the problem with Clara. But with E1, her skill does not remove marks of counter. So that means more DPS, by the way. 
Teams wise, there's no objective team to actually use. You can use like two supports, one healer or three supports if your DPS do not have Eidolons at all. So for example, you can have a team like this and then two core defense down supports and let's say uh, Ting Yun for example. So this is one of the ways to zero cycle. So you have three supports here. So this is double defense core. We can also do Ela and Silver Wolf here. So this means this is also called a double core defense down. Then you can also do a double Foxian. So that is the Yukong and Ting Yun combo. So this is very general combo. Now if your healer is definitely needed in some of the stages and your dps is strong enough then you can put in a locha or you can even put in links for example so this is exactly one of the ways you can do this but generally for links you will be saving it for blade but for example like a tan heng like this we can put double foxian and put locha if let's say your tanfeng is doing well you can use double core defense down or even a double core foxian pretty much it but please bear in mind that this kind of zero cycle teams are impractical in general so that means you don't need to use zero cycle clear teams just to complete your moc i mean you can just have the general team of having a healer two supports and one dps very very general teams here however for zero cycle clears why i say it's impractical is because of having three supports and one dps generally that's the case and normally you won't do this because there's a lot of rng involved unless for some reason you don't have a healer and then you really need to zero cycle clear this is the only time where you need to use zero cycle clear teams in your normal mocs and another reminder is that zero cycle clears do not give you an achievement in the game it's only there to show off your skills and to flex your team strength and what your account is truly capable of thanks a lot Moldovan tigers for allowing me to join the guild again i'm hoping to try my zero cycle kafka builds again i hope that i'm able to succeed this time cheers